So can artificial intelligence systems understand the task they're given? So we want to set up an experimental kind of platform to assess whether we can understand what these uh, artificial intelligence systems can do or not in a controlled kind of set, setting. This is actually a research published three days ago in Science Robotics magazine, and I'm gonna tell you about it. So, yeah, so the controlled experiment that we're going to try to uh, work on is a drone moving towards a target in an environment, okay? The drone has a camera mounted on top of it. Now, I'm gonna walk you through the process of how we train the systems and how we're actually uh, trying to understand their understanding capability, task understanding capabilities of the systems. So the drone is actually most, uh, we have a human pilot. We pilot within a forest environment towards these random objects look, located in this environment. As we see, the drone gets closer to those objects and then turns towards another thing that is inside the environment. We do that multiple times, not that many times, like maybe 100 times, we repeat this kind of cycle with a human pilot. This ends up being like a data set, okay? This shows like a diversity of data sets that we actually include in our training setup. So what we ask the drone to predict is to predict the state of the drone. That means, where do you wanna drive the drone next? Okay, given these images that you see, where do you wanna drive the drone next? We're not giving it any label, we're not providing the drone that yeah, like there is a target in that environment, so the drone has to really understand where should I pay attention to in order to fly next. So we train a couple of agents or artificial intelligence systems, one of like some standard deep learning models and some of our own models, that I will show you later. We train with those data that we collected, we mount the data on top of this drone again. Now you're gonna see the result of how a standard deep learning model, when the model is deployed on the robot, behaves, okay? So here what we see is that the drone is actually confused. So it actually, learns to predict the next movements of the drone, but it actually doesn't know what it is actually doing, you know? If you look at the attention map of the drone, place I, I illustrated, you see that it actually pays attention to like those lighter regions or the places where the drone is paying attention to. And it's like mostly like the brighter regions in the environment, so it seems like this system has not learned exactly what is the task that you're trying to encode inside the drone. So next, we try some of our own networks, which is called liquid neural networks. These are a class of neural networks that are biologically inspired. They're inspired by how neurons interact with each other through synapses. As we, saw, as we see here, for example, the presynaptic uh, um, stimuli come in and then it activates the second neuron. Okay, so we take this process and we build an artificial intelligence system that is capable of uh, uh, performing a little bit more than a deep learning model. And now let's see how a liquid neural network agent perform this task. So here, as we see, not only the drone is actually now moving towards that object, but also it pays attention to that object. If you look at the attention map, the black region, you see that the entire attention of the drone is on that chair. What that means, that means that the drone, actually the neural network extracted the task from the data sets that we actually never said that there is a label in there, okay? So now let's see more examples of this, okay? These are static targets. Now this is another uh, liquid neural network, that's another uh, uh, target. Let's see uh, the performance of the system in this kind of setting as well. So it's actually, as soon as we run the drone, it actually starts navigating towards that object and pays attention to it as we saw before. Now let's look at how variations of neural networks pay attention to their targets. So here, for example, what we see is an attention map of five different models. Two, the first two are variations of liquid neural networks on the left, and then the rest of them are artificial neural networks we see that they actually extracted the task from what we showed 
from the data that we never labeled. So we take this to the next level. Now, we tested it in that forest environment. And if you remember, all our training data is coming out of a forest environment. So what we want to do now, we want to take these chairs that we trained on, uh, you know, like we put them in the forest. We, now we want to train them, uh, we, we want to put them in, a, in an urban environment and see how the drones actually perform in those kind of environment. So I'm just going to show you some performance plots in, different, in four different variations of environments. We saw, like, we have six different variations of models. The last two, the last on the right, are liquid neural network variations. So you can actually look at the performances. 100% means that they can actually achieve the task 100% of time if you tried it 100 times. OK, so we try this thing, how many times they can actually successfully execute this task. As we go from the forest to a more urban environment, generally the performance of the neural networks drop. But as we see, still liquid neural networks are performing uh, significantly better than the others because they understand the task to, to some extent. Now we take it one step further. All the examples that I showed you, we train the neural network from targets that are located like let's say 10 meters or 15 meters away from the, from the drone. Now we put the drone further away that, that you barely actually see. The camera is now located on top of a chair. Now the drone comes from the very, very far away. So you see like the environment has a lot of perturbation. So this is like a finds the chair and comes and stands right in front of the chair. So it, this is actually something that is completely out of distribution. Even the environment is completely different from what we have seen in terms of like wind profile and everything, the, the weather condition, everything is actually varied. Another example, we, now that this system understands that task of, let's say I recognize this kind of objects, I can design more tasks. Like for example, I can infinitely loop between different targets. This task was never inside the training uh, a kind of process of the neural network. But the, but the agent is capable of doing that, you know. And that's one of those uh, significant uh, uh, generalizations that we see out of such simple representations they learn. Another next level is that we train the systems to follow static targets. What happens if I start moving the target? Okay, does it actually follow? This is actually outside of this campus itself. Like, and, and as you see, there are a lot of like red objects on the back end. You know, we have like a lot of adversaries in the environment, but it's still like the system is actually capable of following that chair. And that was the moment that for me was very impressive because this is something that we've never shown like to the drone and is still being able to do that with that limited amount of data and everything. So, as I said, this work was actually uh, you know, featured on the cover of uh, Science Robotics three days ago. I, um, and uh, with, uh, with a group of scientists from here, MIT, the friends of mine, Makram and uh, Patrick and Aaron, and uh, um, uh, we have Ryan and Matthias, we gave a talk today here as well, and uh, Alexander and our supervisor, Daniela Rus. So we think that it is true that the whole world is right now zoomed in on uh, GPTs and chat GPTs. It is also important to actually do some core and fundamental uh, innovations in the network architectures and how we design artificial neural networks that we can understand and they understand what they do. Thank you.